Hey everybody, it's Shashan with the Steam Moto. Uh, today I want to talk about my electric build I got going on here. So I decided to build an electric bike because uh, ultimately I really wanted to be able to ride in my yard. I have seven acres out here, but I've got neighbors that border my seven acres and I really wanted to ride a full-size bike in my yard if I come home after work or even go out before work. I wanted to be able to go out and ride. So me and my friends ride pit bikes out there today and they're not too loud, but they're probably really at the limit to where it's going to be start making my neighbors pretty angry. So I started figuring out what else I could do. Um, I started looking at exhaust for my FC350 to see if I could quieten it down. And it's just, there's really, really no good solution other than going electric. Uh, you know, a Stark is very expensive. Altas are out of business. So I didn't really want to go that route. And then I started looking into building my own bike. And that's what I decided to do. So I found a frame on Facebook Marketplace, which is this 2007, 2017, excuse me, 450 RX uh, frame. It looked pretty good when I first went out and looked at it. Uh, but now that I got home and started tearing it apart, I found out there's a lot of bearings that were seized. Um, brakes had to be reworked, so a few odds and ends of things. But overall, it's not a bad foundation to start with. Next, I started looking at kits for the motor and the battery and I bought a kit from Electroco and Company. Now, I have nothing negative to say about this company or their kit because I think everything is done very, very well. So I highly recommend that kit if you're looking for your first build. Um, if you read on the forums and read uh, Facebook Marketplace and, or Facebook and all these other groups, they will say you can source all these components for this kit cheaper than what Electro and Company will provide. But to me, I didn't want to have to program the motor controller. I didn't want to have to source the motor. I didn't want to, have to build a battery. I just wanted it all to come in ready to go. And that's what the Electroco and Company kit is. It's a plug and play kit. Um, you don't have to be an electrician to make this work because everything's color coded. All the wires are already pre-made. Uh, wire connections, you can't get them backwards, you can't mix them up, they're already, uh, they're, they're only one-way plugs and you know the throttle cable only plugs into the throttle port and so on for the on and off switch, you can't get them mixed up. So that made it extremely easy right off the bat. Uh, so that's the way I went. Did a little bit of research on battery size, I went almost the biggest battery that they make and that was really the most expensive part of this. And this is where a lot of the guys online are saying you can get them cheaper if you build them yourself. Again, I didn't want to build them myself. I didn't want to source all this stuff. So I went ahead and just got it from Electroco and company. So got the kit all together. Uh, the next thing I wanted to do is I wanted to learn how to weld. So I bought a welder off Amazon called a Yes Welder. It is a uh, MIG TIG and stick welder. I went with a MIG setup, but I went with a gasless flux core wire. I didn't want to get a bottle of Argon, and I didn't want to get into that yet. I do eventually want to get into that and learn, but that's where I'm at. Uh, so I made all the frame, the mounting pieces and brackets, which we'll show in videos later on. If, if you're somebody that wants to do this, I think one, the Electroco and company kit is a great way to start. And then two, getting your own welder and learning how to weld you know, this is a great way to start. The welds aren't big. You don't need thick metal. Uh, it's just a good, it's an all, a good all around place to start. And having a welder around your house is always useful for welding up odds and ends of things. I've fixed uh, the Bobcat loader cylinder, the cylinders, uh, the fittings broke off. I rewelded those on there. There's just other odds and ends of things you can do with a welder. So, uh, that's where I sit today. So, I'm still not done with this build. It's rideable right now, but I still need to fix a few things. So one, I have no gas tank on here, which you'll see. Uh, I got wires sticking up here. I've got to figure out some way. You'll see the seat's not connected to anything except for uh, where it mounts to the middle and on the bolts in the back. So I still need to figure out something on the front. I think I'm going to 3D print some cover in some sort, and I'm also going to put an on and off switch for the battery right here to disconnect the power. And then uh, after that, I still have the radiators on here. I need to take those off and build brackets for them. And I uh, just need to tidy up a few things. You know, new plastic, new seat cover will make this look great. Wheel bearings are shot. Seals are shot. Uh, front wheel and back wheel. The swing arm bearings, gone. 
Uh, you can probably hear this. Okay, maybe not. The steer bearing, you can trust me, the steer bearings, they need, I don't know what they need. Grease, replace, something. So I gotta get into that. So we've got a lot of odds and ends of things. Um, first ride so far were fantastic, fantastic. It's probably not gonna replace a 350 or 450 and maybe not even a full size 250 on big open tracks. You know, if you're thinking like Red Bud, it's probably not gonna replace a, a, a gas bike there. But to me, riding in your backyard, I can come home, get on this thing, flip this switch and go ride. You know, I, I, it, it's, it's amazing. There's no warm up. I don't need to haul it anywhere. I can just go in my backyard and go ride. It's great. My kids are all in their Stasics. I can flip the switch and go. Two thumbs up to me. That makes it totally worth it. Uh, but you know, probably smaller to mid-sized tracks, this thing's gonna be perfect, perfect. Uh, especially like an arena cross track where you're gonna, you need a lot of that torque down low or lo at low speeds, man, this thing is gonna be, this is gonna be a winner for sure. Uh, medium sized tracks, you can play with the gearing a little bit and get a little bit more top speed, a little bit low end, you know, whatever you may need. Uh, it's gonna be prime for those, but probably uh, climbing up Mount Martin at <laughs> or Red Bud, hitting the uh, Laraco's Leap, Probably not going to do that on this setup. Now, they do make bigger motors. Uh, you know, it's not a Stark Barg with 80 horsepower, but it's still probably at low speeds coming out of really tight turns, torque wise, probably equivalent to a 350. But once you get up to speed, you know, it starts tapering off, probably 250, even down to like a 125 at higher speeds. Um, but otherwise, I've got nothing negative to say. I think it's a blast. And if you were looking for a great winter project, this is the way to go. This has taken me about 10 months or so off and on getting, uh, getting to where I'm at now. And a lot of that is from only having like an hour or two to come out and start putting it together. I've got small kids, so nap time is, <laughs> nap time is my time to come out and play. Uh, so I've got small windows. But now that I've done this, I could probably get one built and I would say 20 hours now that I know what to do. And I would buy a few more brackets and braces that are pre-made, which would speed up the process, other than welding them from uh, scratch, which is what I did. So, otherwise, uh, follow along. I'm gonna post all the videos of, of the build. And if you have any questions, let me know, and I'll, uh, you know, I'll show you w what I need or what, what, I can, what, what I needed and whatever I can help you out with. So, feel free to ask, reach out to me, and, uh, Thank you for following along.